The topic of this video is solving systems of linear equations using substitution or elimination. Let's look at a problem. All right, our top equation is negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 12. Our bottom equation is 7x plus 21y equals 42. How shall we solve this, substitution or elimination? Well, let's go through the three steps to make that decision. Step one, clear fractions. We don't have any. Step two, look at the coefficients of the x and y terms. They are negative 2, negative 6, positive 7, positive 21. Since there are no ones or negative ones, we will not use substitution. Instead, we will use elimination. All right, so which variable shall we eliminate in this problem? You can pick x or y. For this problem, I will choose y. Notice that in the top equation, the y term is negative 6y, and in the bottom, the y term is positive 21y. These are not opposites. How do we make them into opposites? Well, one way would be to take the number from the coefficient of y in the bottom equation and use that number to multiply both sides of the top and also take the coefficient of y from the top equation and use that number to multiply both sides of the bottom equation. Now, what would happen if we did that? We would have to distribute this 21 to this negative 6y. 21 times 6 is 126, so we would get negative 126y. Similarly, when we distribute this 6 here, 6 times 21 is also 126, so we would get positive 126y. Negative 126y, positive 126y. Those are opposites. That will achieve the goal. So let's go ahead and complete our distribution. Let's distribute the 21 first. We will get negative 42x minus 126y equals negative something. I'll use a calculator for 12 times 21. 252, and of course it's negative. And then on the bottom, 6 times 7x would be 42x plus 6 times 21y is 126y equals, and 42 times 6 is 252. Okay, did we achieve the goal? The goal was to create term opposites for our y terms. Yes, we have negative 126y, positive 126y. Those are opposites, and when you add opposites, you get zero. So now we can add our two equations together. So negative 126y plus 126y is zero. Now we just have to work with the other pieces. Well, you might have noticed that we actually got opposites for the x's and for the constant terms in our equation as well. We weren't necessarily trying to achieve that, and yet that was the result. So this problem is going to be one of our interesting problems where we're going to find that all of the variables will disappear, which means we're dealing with one of the special cases. Parallel lines, where the solution is no solution, are coincident lines, where the solution is all real numbers. Let's find out which one it is for this problem. Negative 42x plus 42x makes 0. Negative 252 plus 252 makes 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. So this becomes the equation 0 equals 0. No variables, but a true statement. What that means is that we're dealing with an identity, a true statement, which means that the two lines must be identical, one sitting right on top of the other. Therefore, the answer to this question is there are an infinite number of points that satisfy both equations at the same time. All real numbers is a shorthand way of writing that. But the more sophisticated way would be to say an infinite collection of points. But not just any old points. Points that happen to be on this line or this one, because when you graph them, you'll find that they are the same line. So there are many ways that we can write our final answer to this problem. We could write a set. Our set consists of all points x comma y such that negative 2x minus 6y is equal to negative 12. 
That's one way to write the answer to this problem. The other would be to use the other equation, the set of all ordered pairs, x comma y, such that 7x plus 21y equals 42. Now, maybe the software platform you're using to learn math this semester wants to have only one correct answer to the problem instead of multiple correct answers, in which case they may specify that the equation that you put inside your set has to start with x equals, or they may specify that it has to start with y equals. So always be sure to look at the way you must format your answer in order to determine what steps you need to take. Let's imagine it said x equals. What that means is we need to take any one of our equations from the problem that has x and y in it and solve that equation for x. Perhaps the easiest equation to do that with is original equation 2, since there are no negatives. 7x plus 21y equals 42. To solve this for x, move the plus 21y to the other side. We would have 7x equals negative 21y plus 42. Now divide both sides by 7 and simplify you would get x equals negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3y plus 42 divided by 7 is 6. x equals negative 3y plus 6. So we can put negative 3y plus 6. And we would have to specify here that y is a real number. All right. What about if the a solution required us to write what y equals. We'd use a very similar approach, but we would solve for y instead. So we would have 21y equals negative 7x plus 42. And this time we would divide by 21 on both sides. Simplify, and we would get y equals 7 divided by 21 is the same as the fraction 1 third and then we still have the negative. So negative 1 third x plus, and 42 divided by 21 is 2. So we would get y equals negative 1 third x plus 2, where x is any real number. OK, there we go. There are an infinite number of ways to write the correct answer to this problem. I have provided you with four of them. Hopefully this gives you all the tools that you need to enter your answer in the way your software platform is asking you to submit it.